In Total Warhammer Multiplayer, eventually you run into players with much better micro than you, forcing you to think outside of the box to win as they outpace you in every step of the battle. Just like here, this battle is a great example. This is a second game in the best of three against Trash from the ODM clan. And he was definitely a better player than me, winning the first battle with us lacking practice lately and, well, my micro got rusty. So, in this battle, I picked a really special army build, one of the strongest meme builds in my arsenal, with a front line of zombies, a second line of grave guards, one of them the Stonesmen, the regiment of renowned grave guard with the regeneration trait. At the back, we have the skeleton spears protecting from any mobility charges. Now, in the skies, we have a couple fell bats as mobility and also a couple hex raves hiding in the tree line. Now, for the single entities, the absolute core of this army, we have a White King and also a Banshee supporting Heinrich Kemmler, who has his full gear equipped. Now, for the single entity war machines, we have the Corpse Carts with Unholy Lowstone and also Mortis Engine. Now, we will talk about the special parts of this build later in the battle itself. Now, let's have a look at my opponent's army. With a front line of goblins, backed up by a bunch of black orcs and some savage orc biggins in the flank, a very powerful front line of greenskin infantry, and a second line of savage orc air boys, and also the rusty airs ready to shoot down some large targets from my end, including this mortis engine. And at the very back, we have the goblins and also orc boys protecting the rear. And also some Apic Loonies, their unbreakable trait really helpful against the terror from the Vampire Count. There's also a single unit of Nasty Skulkers ready to drop their smoke bombs, limiting my mobility's movement. In the front, we have some skirmishing cavalry, the Mole Grubs Manji Marauders, providing that armor piercing skirmishing fire. As for the single entities, my opponent here really going for that sniping tactic here with the Gaze of Mork from the Orc Shaman and also the Vindictive Glare from the Night Goblin Shaman, ready to shoot down any units I might bring. Well, I guess the Mortis Engine is in great trouble today. For the leadership, we have of course the most powerful lord of the entire Greenskin army, Grom the Paunch. And that's it for the army builds, let's get the battle started so I can talk about how this army build helped me bridge the skill gap between me and my opponent. There are two ways to pick an army. Normally, a player would be picking different units according to their opponent's factions to exploit their opponent's weaknesses and counteract their strengths, resulting in a vastly different build in every single matchup. Just like here, my opponent, uh, Tretch brought in some casters to snipe out my single entities and also a backline of Black Orcs with their specific function to hack down Grave Gods. However, on our end, our army build is basically the same regardless of matchup because all I did was to pick a specific function of this army, a very strong ability, and then just capitalize on it, ramp it up all the way to 200%, and if everything goes smoothly, the power of that core mechanic can carry myself to victory. For this battle, the mechanic would be the self-healing functions on different single entities. We have Heinrich Kemmler providing 12 HP heal per second if his Chaos Tomb Blade is active combined with Master of the Dead, and then the Unholy Lodestone will be providing extra 2 HP regeneration as well as the Mortis Engines, well, the Reliquary Binding will be providing another 2 HP per second regeneration. So all in all, a blob would be receiving around 16 HP heal per second if they're just blobbing around the single entities. And that's not the end of it, because some units on the Vampire roster has the regeneration trait, providing additional 4 HP per second, just like the Mortis Engine and the Stonesman. So certain units can get up to 20 HP heal per second, and on top of that, they are the Chaos Tomb Blade providing extra 5 melee attack buff, and the Rigor Mortis, an extra plus 5 melee attack and plus 5 melee defense. As a result, you have an extremely powerful healing blob of the Vampire Army that doesn't need any Winds of Magic and can still hit their healing caps in the middle of their combat. And with my opponent here pushing forward with Grom the Paunch plunging himself straight into combat, now being surrounded by the flaming attacks of the Hex Wraith, Grom the Paunch is eating quite a bit of damage, while the Mortis Engine is being specifically focused by a whole bunch of missile fire, already down to around 60% of their health, while my Micro on the Hex Wraith is definitely lacking right there, 
Being caught by a bunch of Savage Orc Biggins and Goblins, they're going down soon. My other Hex Wraith just took a massive Brain Burst to the face, and also my Mortis Engine, down to around one third of its HP. It is in big trouble right now with all that Focus Fire, so I had to drop in some of my Zombies and Felbats hoping to silence that Fire Power. But now, here comes the real power of this build. You see that only, well, less than 2000 HP, but it is rapidly healing right now. The numbers quickly taking up as Heinrich Kemmler has started to engage in combat and hopefully activating his Chaos Tomb Blade soon as he contacted with one, some of the enemy units while the Hex Wraiths here are just standing by receiving the passive heals from all these single entities and now they will be quickly recovering their HP despite some of their units still taking damage from the enemy units while the Grave Gods without the support from the characters will be crumbling after all, the auras have limited range and cannot cover everything on the battlefield. Overall, my infantry push was really messy and I was not able to effectively silence the archers. But still, the Mortis engine is healing up. Now back up to over 2000 HP, it is still surviving. And while my infantry, they're just doing the hard grind here. Stonesmen absolutely holding like true champs. Though I did make a little mistake here with the corpse cards pushing too deep into enemy lines being hit by a bunch of greenskins including Grom the Paunch. But worry not, with all those passive healing auras from all the single entities, they'll be healed back up in no time alongside the Mortis engine. While my rest of the army is just pushing forward, now being able to catch some of these Manji Marauders, a nice um, fanatic cast straight down the line ruining some of my Skeleton Spears, Infantry and Grave Gods. Now back to the Mortis engine, it is still standing. Still over 2200 HP even after all that fighting. It has received a lot of punishing from the magic missiles and the arrow fire, but the healing kept it alive. Of course the air boys are now back online and I need to shut them down soon. I'll be charging in some of my hex raves, receiving some dedicated invocation healing. Not needing invocations to heal my blob allows me more winds of magic to do these kind of dedicated heals. And now they will be silencing the savage art begins while my mortis engine will continuously survive with barely any HP left. Around 800, now still healing, closing in on the healing cap, even being shot at by a bunch of rusty airs, not really having the best time of its life but it is still surviving. I was also trying to move around my Mortis engine hoping to dodge those incoming shots. And now Tretch activated a massive WA, giving significant boost to the offensive power on the greenskin troops but it was a bit too late as the Black Orcs in the front line were beaten by the Stonesmen, previously buffed up by the Von Hals Dance Macabre. In addition, the Mortis engine was draining the health of surrounding enemies. Speaking about the Mortis engine, it is still hanging on to its dear life down to the last few hundred of its HP, hitting the healing cap already. It has been an absolute chat, tanking all those arrow fire to the face. Another undead chat, Krell the Champion, was summoned earlier after scaring off the Orc Shaman and Grom the Paunch. The two chats charging straight into the Orcish formation together. The Mortis engine finally goes down in a glorious explosion, disrupting the formations of the Greenskin forces. Now my Sternsmen, who have been receiving a whole bunch of healing the whole time but with no invocations of the Hex, they are also closing in on their healing cap as well. As for the Corpse Cart, it is still standing despite receiving some significant damage in the earlier stages of the battle. And now with my forces forming up blobs, it would be really useful in providing additional melee buffs and also healing. And an overview, the balance of power shows a rather equal footing between both armies. But if I can actually snipe out Grom the Paunch and chase him down with the Hex Raves, then I still stand a pretty good chance to win. While all these Black Orcs, they're grinding heavily through my infantry, the Zombies and also the Stonesmen are having quite a hard time fighting through these armor piercing units and heavily armed themselves. But with the healing and the attack buffs, the plus 10 melee attack from the um, corpse cart and holy low stone as well as the chaos tomb blade. These greenskins elite infantry are slowly buckling under the weight of the anti-infantry stonesmen and the heroic support of the vampire count. And the rusty airs here shooting in trying to snipe out my units is not exactly effective as the shield block chances and also the small hitbox of the single entities are not exactly in their favor. Now let's go look for Grom the Paunch who should be fighting a white king on somewhere on this map. Yep, right here. Krell successfully sandwiched him with the White King, doing some massive damage to Grom the Paunch here, and Grom the Paunch will be routed. And with the um, Hex Raves here charging into the Rusty Airs, I realized I cannot afford to let Grom the Paunch come back, so I'll be pulling out these Hex Raves and dragging them 
to chase down Grom the Pond. Circling around all the green skin infantry so they can go straight for the big fat goblin himself. While the rest of my units, they are pushing for the back line, trying to silence all these archers, especially the Sternsmen who are now closing in on the healing cap with the support of some zombies they will no doubt win against all these goblins, but the Black Orcs might be a bigger problem. However, my single entities are still pretty much healthy, while Heinrich Kemmler is barely touched with all the passive healing and whatnot. And the Hexraves at their healing cap are able to chase down Grom the Paunch with their terror, routing him and then using the flaming attacks to hack down the regenerating goblin. And now, with the balance of power in my favor, I am pretty much confident in winning this game, as my Sternsman, still retaining quite a bit of HP left, would be unopposed in this kind of late game where the Black Orcs are mostly dead, and my single entities being extremely healthy while my opponent's missile fire are running out of ammo. On the flanks, a couple goblins are busy fighting away some summoned zombies they're desperately needed in the blob fight in the middle to support their Black Orc brethren who are losing against the very much healthy vampire blobs. Night Goblin Shaman spamming those Vindictive Glare, hoping to snipe out my single entities, but you can see here, despite not receiving a single invocation of Nahek, Heinrich Kemmler and the White King both reach their heal cap. Same goes for the Sternsmen. And I basically had 70% more of HP in this combat due to all that passive healing that comes for free. Just a little bit of funds needed and no wins of magic cost. And suddenly your army has an additional health bar like an Elden Ring boss. And with the um, Hexraves able to hack down Grom the Paunch around here, I'm not sure where he died, but basically the leadership of the Greenskins are dead despite the hex rays themselves disintegrating into their demise. Now there's only the night goblins holding the eight peak loonies, their unbreakable trait, helping them to hold down to the last men, but being surrounded by a bunch of zombies and stunsmen, it is of little doubt that they will be finished off at some point, while the goblins remaining will not be able to turn the tables. And with that, despite some of my major mistakes, some pretty bad micro coming from my controls, the build I designed was able to carry me to victory. When you think about it, Total Warhammer is basically a game of complex rock, papers, and scissors, and the player with the better micro can keep their scissors alive and maneuver them to the right positions to cut down the paper. But sometimes, if you bring the right army build, paper can beat scissors. With the tools available in every single roster, there are things that can turn around engagements by granting your unit some amazing buffs, and in this case it would be the healing buff stacking. Now normally, the Mortis engine would have been shot dead by a spam of Vindictive Glare, Gaze of Mork, and also the air spams all of which I was not able to shut down effectively with my micro being all over the place. Suffering massive damage in the early game, if not for the passive healing, even with the invocation of the Hex, the Mortis engine would have gone down without doing much damage, but instead they were able to earn back 1000 value, earning two chevrons and absorbed a ridiculous amount of ammo and winds of magic from the orc casters. That gave the rest of my army the safe haven to start pushing without the harassment from all the arrow fire and the spells, and then the Sternsmen were able to challenge the Black Orcs. Now, the Sternsmen were able to get 1000 worth of damage and get quite a bit of kills against the most elite of Greenskins. Normally, with the armor piercing and also the massive weapon strength from the Savage Orc Biggins, these Grave Gods would have lost the combat. But again, all that healing, and on top of that, Heinrich Kemmler's Chaos Tomb Blade was able to bring back that combatants, sustaining the model count on all these Grave God units whenever they're close to the Legendary Lord. That allows the Sternsmen to hold firm against the Black Orcs, using their anti-infantry bonus, the stat buffs from Heinrich Kemmler, and the Corpse Cart, supported by the Mortis Engine Health Drain to beat down these heavily armored Greenskin Infantry. By coming up with this special healing combo, I was able to reverse these unfavorable engagements and surprise my opponent, pulling out on top despite my opponent getting the supposedly favorable engagements. Honestly, Tretch here did a lot of stuff right, while I did quite some massive mistakes here, including having my Hex Raves trapped by his units in the early game. But with the healing, I was able to pull back the game, especially with the extra winds of magic that I was able to to save up 
by not needing any invocation of the hex to sustain my blobbed up infantry and single entities. So overall my opponent did an amazing job with the green skin army despite me having advantage of an extra health bar with the healing cap. When you look at the damage values, all these savage orc begins basically earn back their own value, the black orcs as well. The rusty heirs as well as the manji marauders earn some massive damage value by shooting at a bunch of expensive stuff including my single entities and the mortis engine but it's just that I have so much healing that their ammo was not enough. And the caster they themselves earned back quite a bit of value trying to snipe my banshee as well as the mortis engine with their missile spams but in the end Again, they just healed back up all the hit points with those passive healing. I do have to say that one mistake my opponent made was probably in the micro of Grom the Paunch here. Being caught multiple times including by one of my Hexrave units in the early game, Grom the Paunch suffered some massive damage and was unfortunately chased off by my surviving Hexrave unit. Overall, one way to beat a more skillful player is simply to beat them in the army build. If you bring something that surprises them and is actually functional, then you're halfway to winning. Total Warhammer isn't simply a game of rock, paper, scissors of putting the right units at the right place. There are so many tools available to you, items, magic, abilities from characters. These tools can turn around those supposedly unfavorable engagements in your favor. Micro is important, don't get me wrong, but a well-designed army build can bridge the skill gap in terms of micro between you and your opponent. I was able to win this battle not because I was a better player, but instead it was because I was able to utilize the healing mechanics. So my opponent trash here not only have to kill my army, but he had to kill it 1.5 times considering all the extra HP I got from the passive healing. Now before we end this video, just want to say that big thanks to Trash for playing this game against me. I was playing the best of three against him and he basically destroyed me in the two other battles. I was only able to win this because of the healing gimmick. Also, I'm not going to do another army build video for this build because this is actually the very first army build I showcased on the channel. Of course, the video quality was a bit messy back then, but still. Since we already have an army build video about this army build, I wouldn't be bothered doing a remake for the army build. So yeah, that's basically it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do, remember to hit the like and subscribe to keep an eye out on new video uploads. And if you have any replays, feel free to join my Discord or send me an email with the replay file attached. I'll be sure to check them out. That's going to be all for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Lich, signing out.